Good morning, Sister Claire. Thank you very much for accepting our interview. Good morning, Patricia. Thank you for providing this offer. Okay, can you just introduce yourself a little bit so people can learn more about you? I'm a Sister of Divine Providence. We're an international congregation. We were founded in Germany, and that's where I started my formation. And um, as a part of being an international congregation, I was asked by the leadership team to have an experience in the US. And then the leadership team of both provinces decided it might be a good experience for me to stay in the US for a while, which I was very happy. And as a part of that, I went to graduate school and got a degree in psychology. And as a part of that degree, I had to do a project. And this is how the LSSAWR was created. And so I'm happy to be here today to speak about this uh, tool for religious life and its ability to assess the vitality of religious life. Thank you, sister. We are talking about life satisfaction scale for apostolic women religious. It's a very interesting project. Can you tell us more? Yeah, the life satisfaction scale for apostolic women religious assesses the satisfaction and the vitality or the fulfillment of an individual sister and also uh, of a congregation. And it has five areas. So the sister herself gets the total score of how she's doing overall and also five subscores. The same applies to a congregation. And so when we look at these sub uh, areas, we have one that's assessing the congregational character. That's like, how is the congregation doing? In what direction is it going? How is it in regard to how they're using finances, uh, how they're assessing their ability to be true to their charism and mission, to respond to social justice, how are they um, experiencing participative leadership and leadership in general? Then we have the individual well-being scale. This is assessing how the fit for the sister as she is continuing over the lifespan from a vocation, initial formation, ongoing formation, how she assessing her fit to religious life within that congregation. And then we have the membership viability. As you can see, they're somewhat overlapping. This is specific scale where the individual sister or the congregation can see how are we doing in regard to vocation work, then formation, initial ongoing formation. And for that, we mean ongoing, not just for the newer members, but over the lifespan of a sister in religious life. As she transitions, um, in, in, in her own personal life, but also within the part of growing deeper into her call as a woman religious over the lifespan. And then we have the holistic growth and commitment that's assessing the overall growth in different areas of the life of a human being in general, but in particular as a woman religious in regard to her spiritual growth, her professional, her personal. Then we have the last one is the interrelationships. And this is very important as we're assessing right relationships. We need right relationships within the world today, as we know. And it is important that a sister looks at her right relationships within the congregation and outside of the congregation as we are apostolic women religious. Now, the wonderful part about this scale is it is like it's taking temperatures, I would say. It's taking the temperature, the vitality, the fulfillment of the individual sister or the congregation across generations. So what we are seeing right now is that this tool is not just for the congregation overall or the individual sister, but a congregation can get feedback across generations. We also have been able now to look at reports from European, English, American 
um, in the US, but we have also been able to look at Latin America and also now in Germany. And what we see that what we have an initial, um, you know, I can't be as confident yet, we need more participation and that's why we're here today. But what we see is that this tool can be a tool that can be assessed across languages and cultures. And it picks up the sensitivity of cultural issues within religious life. So the culture, but then again, the religious culture within the country. And that's where this tool can be very sensitive and get feedback. We also see that for religious congregations that in the Western culture are now looking at, you know, declining numbers, closing down um, sponsored, giving sponsored ministry in responsible hands, but also closing down some of their, um, you know, their mother houses, that sometimes it's important to keep in mind that there's still vitality. It may look very different today than it, than it used to when you had larger numbers, but this tool gives feedback to the congregations in the Western culture of where the vitality is and how they want to use that vitality. And that's where the congregational report, it could be an assistance as congregations are looking at restructuring. So it is not one more thing, it's not distracting, but it is assessing the, the deeper sense of the individual sister and the congregation, a part that sometimes could be missed as we get too involved in congregational planning of the future in regard to what do we have to close? Uh, how do we assess uh, the, a good retirement plan of the older sister? Here is an option of a tool that can also help you to look at how are we doing as sisters and our life within the congregation and where can we pick up the vitality and move forward as we're looking at the vitality of our own congregation and religious life. It seems very important and interesting. You can count on USG to disseminate the scale because we found we live in a world of data and also uh, religious congregations need data to better understand their life and to, I mean, to nurture vitality, vitality. So thank you very much. And I would like to ask you, uh, what are the first steps, you know, uh, that the congregation or a sister who is interested in learning more of the question or participating, what, what uh, should, should she do? So sisters from all over the world, whether they're in the United States, in Europe, in Africa, in Asia, have access to our website. Uh, as long as they have a computer and internet access, they can go to our website. They can contact me personally. The information is on our website. Um, but the individual sister can also just decide to participate, even if her congregation doesn't participate. Everyone can go to our website and under the participant tab at the bottom is the cover letter for each language in English and Spanish and in German right now. Now, what we hope is that we actually can work with the leaders of congregation so that we can provide them a report. We need at least 51 sisters of a congregation, regardless of the size, a minimum of 51. The more, the better, the more meaningful the report will be. And if it's a smaller congregation, like sometimes newer congregation, younger congregations are smaller, then we need more than half of the size of the smaller congregation. This instrument has also shown that it can assess the life satisfaction of a smaller congregation, whether it's in Latin America or somewhere in Africa where newer congregations uh, emerge. Um, however, if it's a larger congregation and sisters are saying, you know, we have more elderly sisters, they're unable to do it online, then we can work with you in that you can tell us, you know, realistically, we have sisters, um, out of 200, we only have 50 sisters that can participate. Well, then we would work with the 50 sisters and see how many volunteer, and if we have more than half who will participate. But then the report is only reflective of the eligibility 
of the 50 sisters within that congregation. If we're thinking about Africa or other areas where the internet is not as accessible, there we would have to have other uh, conversations. But in general, you can contact me via our website. And if the individual sister would like to participate, all she has to do is go to the participant tab in the cover letter in the blue link, and she's right in our study and she can choose the language. Thank you very much, Sister Clara. I'm sure that many congregations will contact you. I hope so, because after listening to your testimony, I'm uh, more convinced of the importance of this scale for our life, for religious life. So thank you very much. And we will uh, disseminate this news and uh, your website so people can feel, can contact you directly. Thank you very much and have a nice day. And thank you to you and the UIST for all your support. I'll also, I want to mention that the Hilton Foundation is sponsoring this and that this is of no cost to any congregation. Everything is free until the end of the year. We have to see if we can get further support. But I just wanted to emphasize that the Hilton Foundation is sponsoring this and that it is of no cost to any congregation. Duquesne has accepted this grant with me. And then, of course, I am not doing this alone. I want to give credit to my LSAWR research team who has been in the background and is supporting all of this and all the congregations who have helped us to get to this point and, and also Global Sisters Report who is supporting in disseminating that. So I, I really want to say that this, while I am alone right now talking here, it is a whole team effort for which I'm very grateful. Thank you, sister. And I read your, uh, the article, your interview in Global Sister Report, and was the reason who moved me, that moved me to interview, you know, more, to, to, to learn more about the project. So thank you very much. And uh, we will be in touch again. Thank you. Thank you and have a good day.